Hey guys, we have a new blog post and we're making this video to talk about the keto food pyramid. You guys know the original food pyramid, right? You got the 12 servings of grains at the mm -hmm. bottom. Fruits and veggies is like four to five servings. Yeah, cereals is like a big part of it. <laughs> I was like, have six servings of cereals. Lollipops is like the top portion. Yeah. But it is kind of an intuitive way to get a point across. So I thought it would be cool to make a keto diet food pyramid. And we have a blog post that has the actual pyramid in it. You guys can check out, you can like print it off, put it on your fridge, share it with your friends, etc. Check that out. Let's start with the base, right? You gotta have a strong foundation. And a lot of times, I was did some browsing because there's some keto food pyramids out there. The base is healthy fats. What are healthy fats? Coconut oil. Avocados. Nuts and seeds. Salmon. So this is what the internet believes healthy fats are. But in my opinion, and I think there is sound evidence to support this, the basis of the food pyramid should be animal fats. Mm. Reasons for that is a couple things. First off, it's lower in polyunsaturated fats, which we get way too much of on a standard American diet, particularly omega-6s. So if your base is animal fats, tend to just have overall lower polyunsaturated fats. It doesn't have to just be overt fats like butter. It can be steaks with a lot of fat on them, like chicken thighs, things like that. Salmon is Fat, good. Fatty meats, essentially. Yeah, fatty meats with some added fats. That's foundation to me. And I think when you're thinking about your diet, having a meat-based diet is gonna be good. And I don't really know what the definition of that would be, but to me, meat-based diet just means you're getting over 50% of your calories on a daily basis from animal foods, which is pretty easy because animal foods are more calorie dense than plant foods because the standard American diet is a plant-based diet. Yeah, that doesn't mean vegetarian, vegan. Yeah, it just means more calories from plants. Right. Generally, it's like 70, 80% of calories come from plants on a standard American diet. So reintroducing nutrient-dense animal foods. I think that's the base. Also in the base though, some amount of plant fats, plant fats, it's really hard to say. I just think a lot of times when people are in the mindset of healthy fats, they overemphasize the plant fats and they avoid animal fats. Good source animal fat, that's your top source of nutrition. Move up a level. Okay. And we're working with meats. Protein, meats. You got ribeyes, you got fatty cuts of meat. So ribeyes, chicken thighs, salmon, those are all great options. I like to have the base of my proteins being red meat. Just because in America, it's easy to get. Cows are raised all over the place and it's easy to find a sustainably sourced like healthy cow. It's a little bit harder to do the same with chickens mm -hmm. just cause it's like very industrialized here. And then things like turkey. So like those, that's naturally very lean or if you're getting chicken breasts, just remember to add that base, that foundation, those healthy fats to leaner cuts of meats. Mm -hmm. And that helps also with like your keto macros and ratio. This is up for debate. I would say third tier is gonna be vegetables, leafy green vegetables. So like, yeah, have a good three to four servings of vegetables a day. That's probably a good thing. Keto friendly vegetables, spinach, broccoli, avocados. So yeah, having some veggies. And another good thing about veggies is when you're first starting, it can be tough to get the recommended amount of fats in. So veggies, you cook them in fats. That makes it easier. You Maybe you put a tablespoon or two of butter on your broccoli and your spinach, things like that. They're a vehicle. Then we got maybe a few servings a day of some more optional items. So mm. like dairies, nuts, I guess not dairies, but dairy. Things like that, that you don't want to really overdo. Right, or they can be easy to overdo. They're easily overdone. They're very, it can be very calorically dense. And nuts and seeds are high in omega-6s, which we talked about wanting to not be too high in those. Dairy is a good source of nutrition. If you want to eat dairy, some people have intolerances and stuff that upsets their stomach. You can avoid it too. Dairy, nuts and seeds, those are things that are just overall easy to overconsume. They taste really good. They're really calorically dense. But yeah, a couple servings a day. And then the very tippy top, we have berries. Fruits. Fruits, so berries are the most, are the lowest carb or the best option for a keto diet. So blackberries, blueberries, strawberries, mm -hmm. all great options. So consuming those more occasionally as opposed to every single day in high volumes, that's the route you're gonna to wanna to go with that top portion, the fruits. Some other things that throw into the top of the pyramid, chocolate, I like to have chocolate. Coffee. Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, that's pretty much it. And then some things to avoid, high sugar fruits like watermelon, Basically most fruits like bananas, apples, those are all pretty high in sugar. Grains of all types, bread. Basically you avoid the entire few rows of the original food pyramid, the bottom rows. Or I think some people say you just like flip the pyramid over, right? 
What's on the but fats is yeah fats is on the top. I just picture the bread at the bottom. Yeah, and, and then, then I know the, milk is like kind of low on the bottom too. Oh, it's like I think it's grains, dairies, fruits, veggies, and then fats. Mm -hmm. Meats and fats, yeah. And then something we didn't touch on that I think would also fit into like that top portion, the fruits area, along with chocolate and coffee, would be any processed snacks you are consuming. So like Quest bars, keto bars any packaged goods. All right guys, so that is our video on the keto food pyramid. Again, linked below is a blog post. You can print out the graphic and put it on your fridge and you can also read about the different levels we just talked about. So thanks for joining us. What's in your keto food pyramid? Let us know down below.